Mr. Price is here. <laughs> Mr. Seppi? Here. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. Mrs. Swag? Here. Okay, flags flew. Ms. Salagi, would you like me to read the um, read the open meeting statement? Yes, that would be a good idea. <laughs> On Wednesday, January 12th, 2022, notice of this meeting was emailed to the press and the current of Egg Harbor Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Egg Harbor Township clerk and posted on the bulletin board in the township hall. I want to welcome, welcome you all to our August 16th meeting. And we're going to have, need a motion for the minutes 4.1 to 4.4. 4. Motion, Seppi. Second, Ireland. Any discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. <clears throat> Doctor. Oh, you're all ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready to go. The last board meeting of the summer. Can't believe it. In a couple of weeks, our schools will be opening and very, very exciting time of the year. But it's also very stressful getting the buildings ready, uh, getting the new information all set. And in really what's important is our administrators' meetings uh, tomorrow, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, getting everybody uh, on board and prepared um, to open the building. So exciting time, but here we are. That was a quick summer. And um, we're going to go and see what's going on, what's been happening. Not a whole lot, but I'm always proud to share. And it always revolves around our student learning goals uh, for student achievement. As I mentioned briefly, uh, we're doing a lot of work with scheduling. Um, our teachers, our students, our bus passes are being prepared. And hopefully we'll, we'll get out in the next week or so. Freshman transition, uh, student transitions um, to their new schools with uh, help with their guidance counselors and principals, Aspire program and Talents program in action along with aviation camps and Khan Academy uh, camp. Uh, professional development for our teachers and administrators. Miss um, Moss has led professional development throughout the district for interventionists, reading specialists, the kindergarten transition planning um, and administration link it. Uh, data collection and analysis, which she's very excited about. We had a meeting today, um, and she, we can't wait to share the results um, by using that tool. And equity training. Tomorrow, the administrators will have trauma-informed uh, training with uh, Mr. McKnight, and then next week, um, equity training. So lots of training, lots of learning. That's what we're in, the education business. So uh, climate and culture, our second learning goal. Uh, security assessments and drills have been discussed and planned. Senior ambassador training occurred at the high school. Preparing for opening days, our custodians, facilities, department, assistant principals retreat was held last week. Uh, Mr. Santilli facilitated that. Administrators are meeting again, uh, will be held tomorrow. And we had meetings today with transportation, food services, custodi custodians, facilities, and security. So we're uh, lots of communication going on. Again, so everybody's on the same page. So we open this large district and open the doors uh, to almost 7,400 students. Community partners, we had a successful national night out. That was fun with this, the school district present. Um, I apologize, I was on vacation, but um, I got text and saw Facebook posts, uh, good ones, um, about a national night out, a community event, which brings everyone together for a great purpose. Um, we have a partnership with Atlantic Cares, and you'll learn more about the uh, mental health specialists that we'll be bringing into the sc school district. Kelly Services had a job fair here in the district. Um, they were also present at the uh, National Night Out, and our Ed Foundation and Community, community Partnership has been working over the last month and preparing for a meeting that will be upcoming um, September 1st or 2nd to prepare um, the final um, uh, you know, preparations for the hashtag EHT Pride Festival, which will be on September 24th. So groups, 
activities, clubs, sports, um, vendors, anyone who's interested in participating, just uh, let us know and we'll make sure you get a table. Uh, but if you're not interest interested in a table, please come out and join us that day. It's always a fun day. So at Carver Township, uh, COVID-19 update. Each month I give an update um, and you know, thankfully things have been dying down and changing. Um, for the good, if you will, but the latest executive order from Governor Murphy is there no more mandatory testing for the unvaccinated, um, and that has stopped here in the district. Usually on Wednesdays we have testing um, with the Rover Labs here, and um, that's been canceled for tomorrow. So just so everyone knows, the quarantine for positive cases um, does not have to occur, and masks are optional. Uh, just traveling, I, I will say, Everything is optional. You sit on an airplane and, you know, they state that it, it's optional if you want to wear a mask, but the most part is to respect those that do and respect those that don't. Okay, so that's the motto we're going with, um, and that's the latest and greatest from, from the governor um, on COVID-19. Here's some noteworthy dates that I always share at this time of the year, and again, this presentation will be on our website, so you'll get to go back to it. But freshman orientation will be uh, the, the 29th of August, and a little different this year, it'll be at night. Um, so some of our board members have some freshman students um, that'll be attending the high school, and it's gonna be a combined presentation uh, to the parents and to the students. So there's either, or it's also gonna be a convocation that night, which is something different. You see that more at the college level, so I'm very <coughs> excited to see that piece placed into the freshman orientation uh, program. Uh, 30th and 31st will be new staff orientation. That'll be, um, where are we gonna have that here? It'll be at the high school because it's so large. How many employees? 103 new employees, so uh, we, are, we are growing. But we are also very fortunate that we are filling positions with teachers. Uh, we have a whole lot more to go. Um, however, when you see some of this, these news reports from other uh, states, uh, Texas last night said, you know, going to a four-day work week. Um, there's a shortage of, of teachers throughout the United States. So um, EHT is the place to be, and um, we, we welcome all and any um, to, to apply and, um, you know, to become employees. So September 5th, we're closed for Labor Day. First day of school for uh, students uh, will be on, on the 6th. And September 24th is that EA Pride Festival. So we bring our teachers back first on the 1st and the 2nd for professional development. And then the students will start after Labor Day in Egg Harbor Township. Every school district is different, right? Back to school nights. Again, this will be shared tomorrow with the administrators. Um, <clears throat> it'll be shared out in their, new, in their letters to parents and staff, but you're seeing it first. These are the back to school night dates um, and times for our schools. Okay, again, EHT Pride Festival, I encourage you and invite you to join us. It's always a great night, so put it on your calendar, um, or a great day, and put it on your calendar, and I look forward to seeing you there. Um, that, that's about it. We're gonna go to the visual part. Like I said, it's a little short, um, but there's gonna be lots happening once September starts. Those of you who have joined us for the first time, the superintendent's report includes a visual of all the things uh, that goes on in the school district has come since our last board meeting, and we capture video. And the land is dark, and the moon is the only light we'll see. No, I won't be afraid, oh, I Just as long as you stand, stand by me. So darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, stand, stand by me, stand by me. If the sky that we look upon should tumble and fall, or the mountain should crumble to the sea. I won't cry, I won't cry, no, I won't shed a tear just as long as you stand, stand by me. And all
stand by me. Whenever you're in trouble, won't you stand by me? Oh, stand by me. Whoa. Okay, that's just a little preview of the great things that go on. That's just the summer. So just wait till September. And Mr. Salahi, that includes my superintendent's report. And I turn the meeting back to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we have a public comment portion. And while the board values and welcomes comments and opinions from the residents, this meeting will now be open to the public for comment, three minutes per person, on agenda items only. If your question pertains to litigation, student or personnel items, please see the superintendent after the meeting as the board does not discuss these matters in public. Depending on the nature and complexity of your questions, the board secretary may ask for your contact information so that someone can get back to you with a response. As a reminder, this is a public meeting and all comments should be appropriate for public setting and made in a respectful manner. If you wish to speak, please come to the podium and state your name and your address. Anybody wish to speak? Okay. Oh, come on up. I'm pretty sure this was on the agenda um, for tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Jessica Martin, and I'm the director of admissions at Atlantic Christian School. And I'm here tonight um, to represent the families that affected by the loss of bus transportation um, throughout the district. So we have over 215 so far um, students from EHT. So um, as you know, EHT. EHT used to provide a bus. Um, in the past, they have provided a bus and discontinued that this year. So that has a great deal of effect on our school as a whole, trying to reroute everything. At Mrs. Martin, yes. that is not on our agenda. Oh, so okay, I'm you sorry. Were, you could wait until the next public portion so we can sure. proceed Thank with you. our business. Thank and you. And we'll, we'll hear what you have to say. Okay, anybody else? All right. So we'll go to finance and operations, and you have the report, Mrs. Sullivan. Our finance meeting took place August the 9th, 6 p.m. Uh, in attendance were Ms. Tamika, Mrs. Tamika Floyd Gilbert, Mrs. Salagi, Mr. Seppi, Ms. Anaya, and Mrs. Germaina. The our update on transportation, the transportation department is experiencing a severe driver shortage um, they have driver aid and bus mechanic vacancies. The department has been working diligently to cover as many routes as possible, both in-house and through contracted routes. Unfortunately, there will not be enough drivers available to transport the number of resident students as they have before. Food service, the free and reduced lunch applications have gone out to families. It's very important that all families complete and return these applications as soon as possible. Lunches will no longer be free to everyone, so this is especially important. Food Service is currently working on filling their vacancies as they prepare to start the school year. Uh, the Facilities Department update, the committee reviewed the status of opening and open and pending projects. The committee was updated on the status of Bargaintown Preschool and the facility and uh, technology needs. The committee was updated on current vacancies there also. Uh, they, we spoke about closing capital projects, Fund 30. Ms. Anaya shared that the capital project funds will be closed out at the 21-22 year end and transferred to Debt Service Fund, Fund 40, to offset the 23-24 tax levy. Uh, Ms. Anaya also shared information on the business office transition from her to the acting business administrator and the incoming new business administrator. Action items discussed uh, with the committee for 864 tonight were the monthly action and information, submission of ESRA 2 and ESRA 3 amendments, the FY22 lease purchase amendments to each of schedule of property number two and schedule of property number three with the Bank of America, approved copier lease and contracts for Bargaintown Preschool, and end of year transfers um, 
the transfers will be large because of the year end cleanup, which we do every year. And that concludes uh, my report. Mr. Mena, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yes, just so, so everyone knows, the end of year transfers will be on the next board agenda. We just, uh, at the time crunch with, with uh, Ms. An uh, Anaya leaving and me starting, we just didn't get that done. So it will be large, but it will be on the next one, just cleaning up all the year end. Um, also, um, on Friday before board meetings, the board members send questions out to the administration to address any of their questions related to board agenda items. On, I just want to share the questions and the answers that were that impacted the finance and operations. Um, we were question, we were asked questions about um, some purchase orders with uh, tactical public safety related to. Um, installing radios in our buses. I was asked how many buses and does it include parts and how was, was it flat rate by, or by the hour installation. Um, we installed radios that were removed from four old buses into four new buses. Um, the actual PO involved included parts that were needed to install the radios into the new buses and the labor was flat rate on those particular repairs. Um, we were asked about the concerns with driver vacancies, what are the plans to make sure the start of the school year is smooth, arrive to school and home safely on time, and they wanted to discuss this the situation which has been done. Transportation is confident that our students will be transported safely and will arrive on time. The ACIT route will be challenging, but we will make it work. We are continuing to look into additional forms of advertising for bus drivers. Um, I noticed today the bus was back out at the corner of uh, Swift Drive to try to get some people in. Um, there was questions on the advantage security and lock opening unlimited security and whether we could use the um, security grant. We did use the school security grant funds already for installation of security camera upgrades. Um, the lock opening unlimited security and security purchase was um, purchased through non-public aid for one of our non-public schools. Um, there's a question about the school roof-mounted storage containers. Um, will they be bought or leased? Once the repairs to the roof are completed, will these bins be removed? They will be purchased. The storage units that are being added have, um, are unrelated to the roof repair. The design intent for that is to have storage on the, on the roof for filters and belts and all to do repairs to the rooftop units because access to that part of the building is very difficult. So moving those things up and down on a regular basis makes it very difficult for the um, facility staff. So this will make it a little bit easier for them to maintain the HVAC equipment. Um, um, there was a question about the cashier at Bargain Town Schools and how we will handle food service there. Um, all preschool students eat lunch in their classroom, district and statewide. There will be a part-time cashier at Bargain Town Preschool for accountability and to help with distribution. Um, we have dual use of educational space and toilet room facilities. Um, we're asking for approval. We do this annually. It just requires county approval. We are not adding anything that has not been previously approved. It's just something that has to be done annually. Okay. We're we're approving. You're approving that I can submit it to them. Okay. Yes. I think that's it for me for finance and operations. Unless there's any questions. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? All right. I need a motion for 8.2. Motion, Ireland. Second, Sullivan. Any discussion? Okay, roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mrs. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Okay, now we need a motion for 8.3 to 8.20. 
Motion, Sullivan. Second, Ireland. Discussion? Discussion? Okay, roll call. Sorry, it was Ireland. Sorry, I'll get there. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mrs. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Okay, curriculum. Mr. Price, give our re your report. Okay, thank you, Madam President. My mic was sticking there for a minute, but I think I have it now, so. All right, curriculum. Um, on 8922 at 7 p.m., we had a meeting. Uh, length of the meeting was one hour. Board members attending, Ms. Borgiano. Did I say it right this time? Okay. Uh, sometimes I get that mixed up, excuse me, but I wanted to make sure I said it right. Uh, Mr. Della Barca, Mr. Seppi, and of course, myself, Mr. Price. Uh, Lily Moss was administrator attending. Items discussed for professional development, field trips, and curricular, curriculum for the 22-23 school year. We discussed doing deeper curricular conversations around different content at each meeting. Uh, we looked at social studies for elementary and showed the alignment with the new resources. Other agenda items were to approve the observation rubrics, the district professional development plan, and policy 2622 for student assessment. Informational topics shared and discussed were around student achievement, data, NJAP grant submission, and the sharing of resources from the committee members. Um, the committee also followed up on Miller Classroom Library books approved in the winter of 2022 and after teacher review. Uh, three titles were removed from the classroom libraries, George, Quiz Queens, and Accidental Love, as these titles dealt with identity and sexuality and were not deemed age appropriate. These books were never in circulation there, and any future books will continue to be looked at and follow district process for approvals. Conclusions reached, the committee would like to look closely at each content area and curriculum, as well as see any and new resources for students. Student data and tracking of the student progress and growth will, be, will also be discussed at all committee meetings. Ongoing Issues still under construction, none at this time. Consideration, I'm sorry, none at this time. Recommendations um, were, were discussed and uh, discarded if appropriate. Um, date and time of place at the next meeting will be September 13th, 7 o'clock p.m. at the Slave Ball Primary, which is the Board of Education offices. Uh, topics, possible topics to be discussed. Health and physical education curriculum, student data, eighth grade ceremony, Parents Club at the high school. Um, so unless Ms. Moss has anything to add, this will conclude my curriculum report. Thank you. In regards to the library books. Microphone. Sorry. Hit your In, microphone. I hit, I hit it. In regards to uh, the library books that were removed, don't someone review all the books prior to them going into the library and what happened? How did it make it there? Okay. Ms. Moss, could you maybe comment on that and give us a little more information? Thank you. So yes, like I said, they were not in the rooms yet. We had ordered genre sets from Barnes and Noble. So they were classroom libraries that come in sets. A lot of times they send like, um, to us, we don't get the full list of titles, and then once they come in, we're able to see. So they choose the books based on the different genres for the grade levels. So we were able to review, share with the curriculum committee, and review the books. Normally, when we get textbooks or just novels by their on their own, but when we order those text sets from companies, sometimes they come bundled already. So I did follow up with the rep. Um, to discuss how we can remedy that in the future to make sure, but we did review all the lists before we got them. So like I said, it's not like these books were with the kids and they are marked as being um, 
that age group, but upon further review, we felt like um, as we filed the district process to have teachers look at it and discuss to, to remove those for now. Did you have anything else? Thank you. <laughs> um, so I do have a few questions that came in, not necessarily to deal with the, exactly what was on the curriculum report, but just in my area. So one of the things that we did discuss was the district professional development plan. And inadvertently, the draft that was put up didn't have the rationale put on it. So we put that back up that had um, the goals. Um, so the question did ask about under fostering a positive climate to promote diverse cult cultures to have um, you know, the cultural awareness in there. And so as you know, we have an ongoing partnership with Peer Through Rowan. Um, we did a lot of training last year. We have our next follow-up for our administration next week on the 22nd and 23rd. So that is reflected in those goals and through that rationale. The other question that came in was around the number of students at our Bargaintown School. Um, we have a max capacity of 180 students there. We, we have 12 classrooms. You can have 15 students in a classroom. We're planning on starting the school year with 167. We leave room for early intervention and special education students as they come into the district. Is that it? Oh, I just had a question. Wait, can, wait a minute. Oh, Go ahead. Is it? Is that yes, all? yes. Thank okay. you, Mrs. Salagi. Okay. We, we could do that in discussion, uh, Mrs. Hyman. Um, we need a motion for 9.2 to 9.5. Motion, Seppi. Second, Ireland. Okay. Discussion. Yeah. I was just wondering, you said that um, cultural awareness and sensitivity training is reflected in the professional development plan. Is that just the, what you, what you call the P-E-E-R? Is that, everything that's incorporated in that as far as that training is concerned? Like you said, it's, it's in the, the plan. I didn't, I didn't see it in the plan. Where is it shown in the plan? So the, the submission of the plan to start is just the beginning of the school year. We continue to add to the plan throughout the school years. We bring professional development in. If you look under 12.3, um, mm -hmm. um, you'll see in goal two at the top, mm -hmm. you'll see that there will be equity and diversity training for all staff throughout the year, listed under the rationale and sources of evidence for goal two. And then peer equity group was added under the initial activities because that's part of our initial training to start the school year. Oh, that was just added. Yeah, that's what I said. That the other one was the draft. The rationales were left off of the original. So in the email today, um, all the rationales were were added in. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I just want to commend the curriculum committee. They've been really on top of everything and I really appreciate um, the time that has been spent reviewing the different curriculums. Uh, I don't know if the public knows, but there are thousands and thousands of books that come into the district. So I really want to, curriculum has worked very, very hard and I appreciate it. Well, uh, Ms. Moss and the curriculum committee. Okay. Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. <clears throat> okay, personnel. Dr. Charlton? I do not have anything for public, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay. So we need a motion for 10.2, 10.3, 10.4 is eliminated. So it would be 10.5 to 10.8. Mr. Price, I'll make that motion. Second, Second Ireland. Discussion? Okay. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? 
Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Uh, my favorite time of the meeting um, is to now announce and welcome a Carver Township School District new employees uh, for the first time as our employees as they sit here in public. And please stand when your name is announced. And, okay, we'll begin with Mr. Tyler Gardner, who is moving from communication coordinator, we know Tyler, to teacher of communication and TV production at the high school. So, <laughs> Megan Ponzio, special education teacher at Davenport. <laughs> Jessica Strauss, preschool teacher at the Swift Slave Law Complex. <laughs> Emily Mara, special education teacher at the high school. <laughs> Nicole Moriello, special education teacher at Davenport. <laughs> Louise Noonan. Special Education Teacher at Miller School. <laughs> Victoria Orsini, Special Education Teacher at the Miller School. <laughs> Danielle Sullivan, Special Education Teacher at the Swift Slave Oak Complex. <laughs> Casey Kiergan, Behavior Specialist at Davenport. <laughs> Caitlin Iacovelli, Preschool Teacher. Kelly Armstrong, third grade teacher, Davenport. <laughs> Jordan Hine, kindergarten teacher, at Davenport. <laughs> Alexandria Rasky, first grade teacher, at Davenport. <laughs> June Lee, middle school digital innovation specialist and technology integration teacher, <laughs> Burnwood. <laughs> Marzina Ector, cafeteria worker, Davenport. Regina Petrucci, welcome home. Cashier Fernwood. Regina was a student when I was at the high school. Welcome. Sherman Kaber, Cashier, Bargaintown Preschool. Barbara Jones, Cashier at the high school. Suyapa Gallo, Cafeteria Worker, Swiss Slave Bowl Complex. Harry Brewmaker, Security Guard, Bargaintown Preschool. Jennifer Reed, preschool paraprofessional at the high school. <laughs> Whitney Hanna, preschool paraprofessional, Swift Slave Ball Complex. <laughs> Here's some good news, great news. Jessica Harris from part-time to full-time, yeah. preschool paraprofessional, Bargaintown Preschool. <laughs> Onward, Paula Uria, part-time to full-time, preschool paraprofessional, Swift Slave Ball Complex. Tania Serrano Hernandez, part-time paraprofessional, full-time paraprofessional at the Bargain Town Preschool. <laughs> Kathleen Statelli, part-time to full-time preschool paraprofessional at the Bargain Town Preschool. <laughs> Catherine Kalindorski, part-time to full-time preschool paraprofessional Miller School. <laughs> Dahlia Actor, MD program paraprofessional Miller School. <laughs> Lakaya Jackson. PSD, Paraprofessional, Swift Slave Ball Complex. <laughs> Cynthia, Cynthia Pulecki, Rational Ratio, Paraprofessional, Swift Slave Ball Complex. Ooh, getting tongue twisters here. Elizabeth Elliott Roberts, Talon Staff for the school district. <laughs> and finally, but we still have more openings, Emily Hall, Talon Staff for the school district. Welcome everyone and congratulations. You're at a great place to, to work and teach and educate students and uh, you're part of the Egg Harbor Township School District family and we're excited that you're here. Um, we'll see you at the uh, new staff orientation um, at the end of the month and um, this concludes my introduction. So if you'd like to stay and continue to view the meeting, you're more than welcome, but you may want to go out and celebrate your new appointment. <laughs> and that's a directive. Yeah, there they all go. <laughs> okay, Mr. Ireland, your turn. The policy committee report. Even though we are the best committee, everybody gets up and leaves. So thank you for staying. 
So like uh, President Salagi said, I am Patrick Ireland. I'm going to give the policy committee report. <coughs> we we uh, held our meeting Tuesday, August 9th for one hour and one minute. And board members attending was myself, Patrick Ireland, uh, Mrs. Salagi, Mr. Seppi, Mrs. Uh, Bongiorno, and then Ms. Hyman was excused. Administrators that I attended was Mr. Santilli, and others was Mrs. Amy Halkalko. Subjects discussed. Bylaw 0163, quorum, policy 2415.05, student surveys, analysis, evaluations, examinations, testings, or treatment. Regulation 2460.30, additional comp compensatory uh, special education and related services, policy and regulation 2622, student assessment, policy uh, 4250 hours and days of work, policy 5511, dress and grooming students, policy 5513, care of school property, policy 5517, school district issued student identification cards, policy 5722, student journalism, policy 2432, student sponsored publications, Policy 9560, Administration of School Surveys. Policy 5514, Student Use of Vehicles. Policy 3148, Retirement Recognition. Policy 4148, Retirement Recognition. The conclusions that were reached during our policy meeting was bylaw 0163 quorum was reviewed by the committee with minor updates being proposed for approval to update outdated language and information related to the doctrine of necessity. Policy 2415.05, student surveys, analysis, evaluations, examinations, testing, or treatment is a replacement requiring two readings to update outdated language within the policy, which is federal. Regulation 2460.30, additional comp compensatory um, special education and related services is a new policy to address the pr provisions of the recently passed state law in response to the COVID-19 pandemic related to compensatory special education and related services. Policy and regulation 2622, student assessment are replacements that have been rewritten and will require two readings that provide updates to recent changes related to student assessments. Policy 4250, hours and days of work, which has been revised to include additional other staff section that includes adjustments to our security guard, hourly rates and other provisions. Policy 5511, dress and grooming students, is a replacement with minor updates being proposed to update outdated language and terminology. Policy 5513, care of uh, school property, has been revised to update language to, and include an updated legal citation which addresses the school district's right to reimbursement for damaged, loss, and destroyed or destroyed school property loaned to a student. Policy 5517, school district issued student identification cards is revised to update language to include the new law that requires student identification cards to print information for the New Jersey Suicide Prevention Hotline, New Jersey Hope Line, and the contact information for a crisis next, uh, text line. Policy 5722, student journalism is a new policy created to address new law regarding student journalism that requires school districts to adopt policy concerning students' freedom of expression in accordance with the provisions of the new statutes. With the implementate, implement, yes, of this policy, it is recommended to the, that the policy 2432 school-sponsored publication is abolished. Policy 9560, administration of school surveys, is a new policy that has been rewritten to reflect the enactment of a new state law that allows school districts to administer uh, um, and voluntarily voluntary survey assessments and analysts and or evaluations concerning students health only if prior written notification has been provided to the parents apologize for that policy 2415.05 addresses the federal laws and policy 9560 addresses the state laws we're almost there Policy 3148, Retirement Recognition, Teaching Staff, and Policy 4148, Retirement Recognition, Support Staff, have been recommended for a revision to provide further recognition on behalf of the Board of Education to EHT staff that are retiring from this district. Policy 5514, Student Use of Vehicles was, discussed, it was a discussion item by the committee. There are no recommended changes at this time. Administration provided information as requested from other high school districts related to students' use of vehicles. 
In addition, the township ordinance and signs in the neighboring community have been posted, while the building principal will be further communicating expectations to both parents and students. Um, our next meeting is, this has the wrong date. Um, uh, possible topics to discuss further is Strauss estimate policy, alerts, updates, mandated policy, and continuation, uh, continued presentation of outdated bylaws with recommended uh, minor updates, and then also class rank at the request of board members. Um, I believe that concludes my report. Mr. Santilli, can you, is there anything else I messed up that you could help me out with? No, I think you covered it all, thank you. Thank you, and I saw, I'm sorry that it was so long. Madam President, I'd just like to confirm that the next meeting for the committees is September 13th, 7 o'clock at Slave Bowl. You are correct, Mr. Price. Thank you. Okay, we need a motion for 11.2 to 11.15. Motion, Bongiorno. Second, Sullivan. Discussion? I just wanted to say um, thank you, Mr. Island, for um, entertaining the class rank discussion again. And I look forward to the data to be shared with the rest of the board to further discuss. I, I have a comment on policy, but that does not pertain to Mr. Ireland's report. Would now be the appropriate time for that? Well, go ahead and do it, and we'll let you know. Okay, so <laughs> speaking to the, uh, the attention of the uh, wonderful policy committee, I just uh, had a concern that came to mind recently over volunteerism in our, uh, in our district. A lot of people that I've seen in the community, and, and we have volunteer programs at hand. I don't want to, you know, whack anything out of line for people who already do so much for us. But I would like to look at policy coming forward that may address new volunteers from our community coming in, working hand in hand uh, with, you know, faculty and staff. So if we could look at that, more partnerships uh, coming forward, I think further looking into volunteers, I think it would be very beneficial for the educational experience of our students, which I think is what this is all about. So if we could address that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank God you're on the policy committee that we can bring that yes. up because you're part of that. Go ahead. I'm glad that you brought that up, Mr. Seppi, because I agree with that. We want to get back to having our parent and community uh, being friendly, getting back to the friendship with them and the, and the um, uh, using of um, having the parties back in the classrooms or in the, you know, in the outside of, of the building, but also uh, having parents maybe come in and uh, sign up and be a volunteer uh, in the classroom. And it'll assist the teachers that are there, um, whether they, or, and also cafeteria, we can bring parents in maybe to help wash down tables. Or, but we would like to see the parent and the community uh, really get more involved again in our community, in our school district as we have had in the past. So I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Seppi. We need to be community friendly again. Mrs. Foy. Um, I definitely agree with having a sense of community amongst parents, the community, um, and the school district. Um, and as a parent, and as someone who works in a school, in the educational field, um, I definitely think it's, it's appropriate, but I definitely think that it definitely has, and I think that we are a um, friendly district to our parents, but I think also due to COVID, due to, you know, the climate of our world, um, violence and different things, I think we've had to um, bring in the, uh, the guidelines <clears throat> and I'm all for that because I, you know, I have children in the district as well, but I just think it definitely needs to be um, a clear understanding for everyone that, you know, it's not trying to keep people out, keep parents out, but there's, um, some people do come with the heart to volunteer and they want to get involved and that's great. Um, it just has to be guidelines have to be super clear. Like there's not, you know, you can't take pictures of other people's children, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a lot of things that people look at as people being mean. And it's really not. It's because when your children are with us, with any school, you 
we're responsible for them, not just your child, but all the children in the building. So just with that into consideration, when the, you know, that conversation comes up, just to keep that in mind, that it's not to keep people out, but just to make sure that we protect and keep all the children safe when they're there. It's a, it's a really, really important. So I think one of the things that should be in the policy would be uh, background checks. Yes. We don't we don't even have contact with the students, and we all have background checks. So anybody that's coming into our schools mm -hmm. and and volunteering, I think that they should. I think the coaches do. Mm -hmm. so, no, I agree. I just want so to. That's, and like you say, um, as as the guidelines need to be mm -hmm. very clear. Yep, coming in and to help and not investigate. I think a that's good the policy. <laughs> well, yes, we'll work on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Um, policy number 11.9, well, 4250, 11.9. I just want to uh, ask that, I know it's just a single reading, but I ask that we um, revisit this policy. I'm not going to say table it tonight. I think we should vote on it because there are some important things that need to be voted on. But I would like to have further discussion about this policy and more clarification about just a certain section in this policy. Okay. It will be on there. All right. Okay. Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mrs. Bongiorno. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? I'm going to abstain from 11.9 and yes to everything else. Mr. Ireland. Yes, to all. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Seppi. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mrs. Salaki. Yes. Okay. New business. And we need a motion for 12.1 through 12.6. <laughs> Motion, Gilbert Floyd. Second, Ireland. Microphone's on. Discussion? Okay, roll we'll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Abstain, 12.6, and yes to the rest. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Okay, old business, 13.1 to 13.2. Motion. Motion, Sullivan? Second, Bonjour. Discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Okay. Changes. Need a motion for eight, wait a minute, 14.3, 14.1 to 14.12. Motion, Ireland. Uh, Mr. Price, second. Let me, Mr. Price, second. Discussion? What? Wait, no. Question, um, did we make an adjustment under the, uh, the personnel to reflect on here, or is everything gonna get shifted up one? Or is everything accurate? So that is a different item than what we discussed before. We already discussed the one under the policy above, or the personnel section above. These are different individuals that declined offers of employment. Okay, I just wanted to double check that. Thank you. Uh, 
Were we um, removing 14.8? No, it's different. No, that's what I just, it, yes, it's that different. Kind of like the same question I had thought. We were thinking along the same, yeah, thank you. Right. Okay, discussion, roll call. Mrs. Bunchorno? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Loggi? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Della Barca isn't here tonight. Mr. Ireland, do you have anything to report from uh, NJSBA? Hold on. No. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go to public comment. And this is for anything that you'd like to discuss with the same rules that pertain to the last ones that I read. Okay. Please state your name and address. My address too? Okay. My name is Jessica Martin. My address is 101 Florida Avenue, Egg Harbor Township. Um, I'm here as a parent and as um, a representative of Atlantic Christian School, just representing the parents who are concerned, um, who were really affected by the loss of transportation um, over um, with a decision not to bus the um, private school children in this township. Um, most reason, frankly, half of them are thrilled to have the money. The other half are trying to rearrange their lives and figure out how they're going to continue going to our school without having to leave their jobs in the middle of the day or go to work late every day to transport their kids. And this doesn't happen to the rest of the district. It's, it's affecting us differently this year. Um, like I said, half are great. The ones that are really upset is are the ones that don't receive the aid in lieu of transportation. I am one of the um, directors who works with aid in lieu of transportation um, with all the districts that we have at our school, which is about 10 to 15. So I understand, um, but their concerns are the same. The roads are not safe. There's no sidewalks on Zion Road. We're at, within two miles of our school is Ocean Heights Road, and we cannot have young children must you know, even the older ones crossing those roads if they're expected to walk or bike to school, as which is represented by the statute that we were um, told. So that's one concern. And the other concern is they're not getting aid in lieu of transportation, but they also have extra expenses to either come up with um, gas on their own, um, aftercare situations, and work time lost for trying to figure out how to do that. So I am just asking again, I wanted to represent our families that are affected. Over 165 families are affected by this change. So thank you very much for um, listening. And if you have any other guidance or um, that would be helpful. Uh, last comment is um, a lot of parents were disappointed with the communication from the transportation office. It was not clear on what we were supposed to, what these students were supposed to do. And the reason that um, this decision was made was not properly done in the letter. The letter says there's either not enough kids on your route or whatever. It said nothing about the change of times of the school district. And it said nothing about the bus driver shortage. It was, I believe, just a sample letter that gets given out, which felt like they were misled. And that doesn't represent everybody, but it does represent some. And I wanted to share that with all of you. So thank you very much. OK, Ms. Martin, thank you for um, representing um, your school community. Um, I, I, my door is always open while being away for a, cu a couple weeks. Um, my door is always open to speak administration to administration. So um, I, I welcome that conversation. Um, but I also, I think as you know, as a school district, we're going through some struggles right now as well, us as well as national, nationally, and there's a national bus drives, driver shortage. Uh, we have one. Um, we are advertising. 
Well, we've offered incentives and we're passing the word to the community that we need bus drivers. Um, our first priority is to provide transportation to our current students. Um, and that being said, we've always tried to be good neighbors with you and we work with our local and private schools to provide collaborative solutions uh, for private transportation. Uh, we're aware that some parents are disappointed um, and, and I can relate to that and that the district is not providing, providing the, the school busing um, to uh, your school. But as a district, we are required to provide transportation or aid in lieu payments for transportation for certain students living in proximity uh, to your private school. Um, this year, without extra bus drivers, we are unable to staff our routes. Um, we have the buses. If you have anyone that has a CDL or would like to drive a bus, send them our way. Um, we can assist. But we have and we will conti continue to communicate with you um, as we hire bus drivers and bring on more rats. But at this time, um, you know, unfortunately, we cannot provide, uh, you know, the services, transportation services to Elena Christian. So again, I thank you um, for presenting your um, disappointment with the board. But again, my door is always open. My, my phone, it works. And uh, please do not hesitate to give me a call. I am open to sitting down, administration to administration, to have discussion as early as tomorrow. Um, but um, that's where we are now. All right. Thank you so much. Is this a done deal, no buses for ACS, or are we still in the process of trying to get bus drivers? So that could change. Is there a possibility that could change? It, it could, however, we do have the ACIT situation where we have to make sure that we get those kids. And we, it spoke that we had five buses going out to ACIT, one is contracted out, we can't even contract the other four. We're having difficulty contracting the other four out and we're trying to do some patchwork with our substitute drivers. But I guess in the perfect world, and we had, the bus drivers come. Uh, we have the buses to provide the transportation. We just at this time don't have the drivers, and we look forward um, to uh, getting. We've had interviews yesterday for bus drivers. So the more we fill, the more slots. Uh, priority is our school district, and then we would go with the with the non-publics. I have a question, Mr. Price. Uh, how long have we been providing bus transportation for Atlantic Christian School? Has it been all along? How many years has it been? And my question is. Are things subject to change in the event that we do come up with more bus drivers and more? We, we are going to consider trying to get this. Dr. Bruccio said as the slots were filled, as a bus, because we do have interviews, and as they're filled, they'll. So this happen. may not be final then. We may be able to work something. We don't know at this well, point. You know, they have a school. They have a school to open right now, and they have right. schedules. They have a school to. But how long, how long have we been providing transportation? How many years has it been? As soon as, it, as long as they've been open. Um, it's just a national crisis right oh, now. Oh, I know. I yeah. Know. But it's been so, a long time. Um, yeah. We, as you know, we had to change our time schedule to accommodate. Um, the so we're going to still, we're going to still, hopefully, we're going to still try to. Uh, we'll always try. We'll try. We're we'll going to try. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak to the board? Um, you guys are, I'm Chaz Wyckoff, 30 Sugarberry Road. Um, you guys already answered my question. I just wanted you to know that I'm one of the ACS parents as well, and I'm on this uh, board at ACS, and so I share the concerns as uh, Ms. Get Ms. Martin. Um, and so I just want to let you guys know she wasn't alone here today, that's all. But I appreciate, I know it's not easy. I appreciate you guys making the commitment to work things out, and if, if at all possible. Oh, press the button. There we go. All right, good morning. Yeah, there we go. I didn't know that. There was a button there. Nobody told me that. Chaz Wyckoff, uh, 30 Sugar Berry. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick. All right, stop. Uh, um, yeah, you guys know what I was saying. So I appreciate your time and, and your, your process into this. And uh, we're, we're hoping that we can continue to work together. So thank you, guys. I think as parents, we can appreciate the inconvenience that this has caused for the parents. Um, and I'm sure transportation will do what they can, but no promises. Mrs. Sullivan. I just want to let Mrs. Martin and the people at ACS know that you do have advocates on the board. We have children there, grandchildren there that are, have been bused. So we all have the same concerns. Uh, as our superintendent spoke, we have to provide for our students first, but it's not going to be a, 
As of right now, it's not a done deal. I would really encourage, if you know anybody that has a CDL, send them our way. Like, I'm just reiterating what Dr. Guccio said. You know, we will use them. We have the buses. We just need a CDL license and a body. So you do have advocates on the school board. Okay. Anybody else? No. Kathy Watson. Oh. Uh -oh. Did something jump? No, no. Kathy Watson. Um, I have good news. Our contract books are in. I have bad news. Part of that bill is your responsibility. So you'll be getting a bill from the association. Uh, be ready. It's hefty. They're, the cost of things has tripled since the last time we had to do a contract book. I was quite upset, but as I as we researched it, it was not getting any cheaper any which way we went. For the future, I would like to suggest a partnership with maybe the students of the high school being able to print that, that contract book up. Um, it has been shared with me that they might have that ability, and I think that's a, that would be a great uh, way to cut the costs. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the time to do it uh, this contract year. I also want to thank the board for um, settling the contract with the Education Association. Um, it's always nice to have a settled contract before you end uh, the school year. Uh, I have several questions. Number one, this district has gone through an upheaval of changing the time for everyone, all staff, all children, to solve this bus issue. Uh, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but I just want you to know that. And also, I have a question. What happened to the, to the road at Slayball Swift Complex? That was supposed to alleviate the backup. So my concern is going into September, no changes have been made, and we're all coming in at the same time. Um, also, we were promised at the end of the year no late buses. Uh, so it, it upsets me a little bit to hear what we were said tonight because it just means to me there's definitely going to be late buses. And we, we don't have that road that was supposed to cut down on the backup of traffic. I, I have to be telling you that honestly, since June, I've driven by <laughs> trying to see if there's any construction. So when I went into the office yesterday, I realized it is August 15th, that was yesterday, no road is gonna get in before school starts. So can you update us on where that is or is that a dead project? The, the latest and greatest is it's it, the update is it's going to be done. Um, it's not going to be done as quickly as we expected it to or wanted to. Um, as as I think we all can relate, um, you know the paperwork and the approvals that have to go through and the relationships uh, with the township and everything. But they they've agreed to. Um, and I'm looking at Jen because she's she's dealing with this hot off the press. So if you want to add, um, if you know any information more specific than what you shared with me this morning, go ahead. Um, actually, I do. Um, Mr. Santilli, uh, Mr. Woodrow, and I are going to meet with um, Bob Watkins and someone else, I don't remember the name, from the city on Monday morning to discuss it because they're, because it's their street, they have to do the bid for the widening portion, but then the portion that would allow for additional um, entrance areas to the school, the staging, is something that has to be done by the district. So we have to find a way to make the projects work together or to do theirs and then do ours. But we need them to work they need we need to have it engineered so that it'll work the way we would we would want it to do. So that's the plan right now is Monday we're going to meet make sure that Steve shares the school's goals. Um, and Curtis has reached out to our engineers to try to get the portion that the school will have to do. Um, drawings made up so that we can make sure that we're all on the same page and we're moving in the right direction. But I know the city is intent on moving forward with the widening portion. We just want to make sure that it's going to work with with our portion of it. Okay, thank you. So there are a few layers. Um, we can think on the positive note. Um, now that the governor has lifted uh, some of the mandates that, um, you know, parents will put kids on buses that, you know, um, 
We'll see. And then you're going to say, well, you don't have enough buses. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I got problems every day. So um, I understand. I understand. But we're doing the best that we can. Um, and, you know, we're going to adjust to the, um, to the new time schedule as well. But, Mrs. Wazen, I'm sure you got the color that you wanted in that book, right? <laughs> uh, they're being delivered on Thursday morning. I'm looking. I was told it's hot pink. Okay. It better be right. hot pink. Finally, finally. <laughs> she got the color she wanted. All right. Um, Mr. Price, I just have a question about Swift, uh, the parking lot. We did make some improvements last year in the parking lot area. Isn't that right, Dr. Crucio? Oh, you're going to maybe bring us up. So we have, we've had some improvement, but I think there was like three phases to it at the time. Yeah, so we were hoping the phases would happen together, but as we go through the discussions with all the entities, people involved, um, Swift Drive widening is going to occur first, uh, which I believe is like the second phase to this grandiose project. And then phase three would be a cut through, um, which would give make the line, um, the ability for the line to have more space, if you will, the line of cars. So that's something that we will share with you. Um, there's discussion with the architect that has to occur. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're at the end. Oh, go ahead. Wait, Mrs. Sullivan's gonna go. <laughs> All of this talk about transportation does bring up, and I'm, I just want to point out again to Mrs. Martin that maybe. Um, you're always backed up there. I, I pick up children there that maybe we want to look, or you would, would like to look at some way of r routing your parents all the way around the building and using that back where the buses usually come. So temp hopefully, temporarily, you know, you can alleviate something there. Um, otherwise, I think probably the police department is going to have to be called in to manage traffic. Okay, anybody else from the public? Okay, Dr. Bruccio. Yeah, so I just want to uh, make a comment on some things that occurred the last couple of weeks when I was away. But um, I'll begin um, as a grandparent, and yeah, nothing's uh, more joyful um, or better than returning from a 10-day vacation and meeting your grandson running across the, the, the floor and getting the greatest big um, bear hug because I was missed. But something that's pretty darn good is uh, when someone that you've led and guided and um, um, supported through, the, through their years of their field of administration has filled their educational dream and met their aspirations um, by climbing an educational ladder uh, to the very top to the seat of superintendent. And while school districts have many, many teachers and a few administrators, there's only one superintendent. And there's not many positions. And the coach in me would always tell someone, whether it's a player or a fellow administrator, when an opportunity presents itself, you gotta go for it. You gotta take it. It may never be there again. You may never score the goal. You may never win. So with that said, um, on August 8th, um, the school district of Folsom um, approved Mr. Kevin Frick as uh, the chief school administrator uh, for the Folsom School District. And coincidentally, the same night, uh, the Galloway School District um, appointed uh, Mr. Stephen Santilli uh, to serve as their next superintendent. So I sit here with great EHT pride um, that our administrators um, are, are, are going to be missed, but are fulfilling their dreams. And, and that's what it's about, um, being able to achieve, um, being able to go from A to A+. Plus. So um, I congratulate them. Um, they will both uh, be greatly missed. Um, but but I, I would never sit here and I told them both, uh, wow, I miss you and I'm proud of you. I, I can't be selfish, um, and I, I would never be. I will never hold anyone back. Um, so, but I just want to let the community know how proud um, the board should be and the community should be that um, nine of our administrators, including myself, um, have become superintendents. Six of will serve in Atlanta County, and we get to sit around the same table and share that Egg Harbor Township pride and the expectations that we have to make Atlanta County bigger and better. Nine superintendents. 11 fellow or former um, administrators have become uh, principals. So there's almost 20 folks out there, definitely um, in South Jersey, uh, one's up in North Jersey now, but um, who um, still keep in touch, 
still share their great moments, um, still uh, say, you know, they learned a lot from being here in Acreford Township. I'm very, very proud of the school district that we all um, sit in and serve. So um, it's a proud moment for us all. Um, uh, Mr. Frick will be here until uh, early October. Mr. Santilli still has work to do until um, the end of 2022. So uh, with New Year, um, Mr. Santilli will uh, be, in, be in Galloway. But with that said, I just wanted to share that with, with the community, uh, that we, we are proud. And uh, good luck. That's lonely at the top. <laughs> <laughs> I just clear that. <laughs> Okay, anybody else? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Let's wait. Something to Oh, yes. EHT is my, it will always be my home. Um, I just wanted to say that I was thinking about, you know, when you were talking about everything and everyone moving on, I just think it's, um, like you said, it speaks volumes to um, A. Carver Township and the type of students that we produce. And um, I'm just really looking forward to a great school year for next year. And I'm overly super excited myself because um, my daughter will be starting at A. Carver Township High School as a freshman. And I still can't believe it. I remember taking her to the preschool program at the high school. And now she's going to be a student at the high school. And um, just hoping that she has the same, you know, fond experiences that I had as a student and looking forward to. Um, just looking forward to a great school year because this EHG, no, I always said no district is perfect. We have work to do, but we we are we are the heart of Atlanta County. A Carver Township is, is that, so I'm excited about that. Okay, Mr. Iron. Oh. Yeah, you had a motion. Oh, yes, motion to close. Yes. Second, <laughs> Sullivan. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Sorry. <laughs> Like, did you have comments for